Can I ask you something? It, it's not a hard question. You probably know the answer. Very simple question though. And it's this. When you die, where will you go? I'm not talking about Rest Haven. Okay. Okay, where do you hope that you will go? Heaven, right? Didn't even have to think about it. One word, boom. I'm going to heaven. It's a wonderful place full of glory and grace. Yes. Now, I know some of the words that you heard from St. Paul tonight it makes you a little nervous. You know, it's like each one of us will come before the judgment seat of Christ and give an answer for all that we've done in the body, whether good or bad. We know what we've done in the body. What our eyes have seen, our, our ears have heard, our mouths have spoken, our, our hands have done, our feet have carried us. We, we know what is due us. But if you've spent much time in the church at all, if you've been to a catechism class, Sunday school, you know that it is Jesus who took within his own body all that was due us. And that the stripes and the crown and, and the nails, they, they've all taken everything that is due us. And so, yes, it is a complete and utter gift that heaven is our home, but we are confident and we are sure, as sure as the resurrection itself. And so we don't typically think much more about the answer uh, once we've kind of checked it off. When you die, go to heaven. Well, I was teasing you a bit because that wasn't my real question. My real question is this. Where does it say in the Bible, chapter and verse, that you will spend all eternity in heaven? Where does it say that that is your permanent residence? Hmm. Well, we could flip through the Bible a little bit. But keep in mind as you're thinking about different passages that the Old Testament Jews did not assume that their eternal destination was heaven. They believed in the resurrection of the body. The early Christians, you know, the people that were running around with Jesus and started the New, uh, the New Testament church in Acts, they, they, didn't, they didn't assume that they would spend all eternity in heaven, but they too believed that they would have a resurrected body much like their own Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's our day and age where we've kind of truncated, made it all short and sweet and simple. When you die, you go to heaven. Don't think much more about it than that. Well, we might think about clouds and angels and, and ice cream and, and my dog and, and, you know, family members. And good Jesus is going to be there too, right? But, but when you die, that's it. And, and then you're, you're there. Well, we didn't just pull this out of the air, of course. I mean, you, you've got some Bible passages. We could go to the most famous psalm in the psalmetry. Uh, psalm 23, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. It ends with this verse. You know, surely all the days of my life, mercy and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Boom, there it is, right? The, now, wait a minute. This is a song. This is poetry. This isn't your address. This is where you'll be, but not location. You'll be with the Lord. Maybe we should go to the very words of Jesus if we're looking for exact locations of where we will be all the days of our life and dwell with the Lord forever and ever. And as we go to those words of Jesus, I think the most obvious would be when he's crucified and the, the two thieves next to him and, and the one is cursing him out and saying, get us off if you're the Savior. And then the other one is saying, no, we deserve to be here. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And what did Jesus say to the thief? 
today you will be with me in paradise. Ah, now that does sound like clouds and ice cream and my dog and my family and Jesus, right? That, that sounds exactly like what we're talking about. And then add to that Jesus' very own words to his disciples. As, as he's preparing them for his own death, he lets them in on a little secret. In my Father's house are many rooms. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. If that weren't so, would I be telling you that's what I'm doing? But it is so, and I'm going to come back and take you to be with me to be where I am. Now we know where we will be for all eternity, right? We're going to be with Jesus. And where is Jesus now? He ascended. That's where we got the name of our church. He ascended back to the right hand of the Father. He's in paradise. He's in the Father's house. He's in heaven. All right, so when you die, the Bible is crystal clear. Where are you going? You're going to be with the Lord Jesus. Where is he now? He's in heaven. But is he always going to be in heaven? See, he's coming back again, right? Right? He's coming back to this earth and he's bringing you with him. And when he brings you back with him, that's the big judgment moment Paul talked about. When we will all stand before the judgment seat and, and what Jesus will say to you at that moment is no surprise. It will be the very same thing he's been saying to you from the moment you were baptized. Calling you his beloved the one in whom he delights. The one whom he calls holy and forgiven child of God. That word that has been spoken over you has been the foundation of your faith in this walk of life will be said to you on that day. And, and as Jesus then makes all of us resurrected, all of us, that's the moment then we get this new body that Paul talks about. This earthly tent. He describes it as a tent. When it's taken down, you're going to get a new heavenly building from God. Not made by human hands. Kept for you in heaven. A heavenly dwelling. But it's going to be a flesh and blood body. And as we get this flesh and blood body, death will be swallowed up and we will have life forever. So when Jesus comes again, and then when the judgment comes, and then the new body comes, guess what's coming next? Your forever home. We're going to be with the Lord and guess where he's going to be? Well, one of Jesus' disciples, John, got to see it and he described it this way. He said, then I saw the new heaven and the new earth. For the old heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the, the new city, the holy Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, beautifully dressed like a bride for her husband. And then I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, look. God will live with his people and be their God and they will live with him. And God himself will be with them and he will wipe every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death or mourning or for the old order of things has passed away. He who is seated on the throne says, I am making everything new. Write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. When Jesus comes again, the new heaven and the new earth come and they meet and God lives with us with our new amazing body. We'll live on the new earth. And what are we going to do on this new earth? What's going to take up our time? Well, worship? Oh, not an eternal worship service. Now you're going to spend all eternity in church. Ah! But everything will be worship. Every thought will bring glory to God. Every action, every word 
every dwelling of the heart, it all glorifies God. There will not be a sanctuary in the new Jerusalem, in the new home that we have, because Jesus is right there. He is our center and of everything. So yes, worship, but no church service. Well, what will we do then? Rest? Rest in peace? Definitely rest. And there will be a party and a feast in that rest. But you can only sit on the couch for so long, right? You're not going to rest for all eternity. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to work. Oh, <laughs> Oh, no, when you hear that word, it's like, oh, an eternal Monday morning in middle management. <laughs> that is a bummer. When you hear the word work, you're thinking about the old earth with its thorns and its thistles, and by the sweat of your brow, you will do everything until you return back to the dust from which you were made. You see, in the old order has gone away. And now you're in this new and wonderful partnership with God in which you have complete and utter freedom to do whatever you want. Because whatever you want will be in complete and total harmony with what He wants. And there will be able to, be, to build anything you want and to craft anything and to sew anything and to bake anything and to paint anything. All of the arts that give us some glimpse of eternity will just be all over. And from small things to big things, from governing cities, and, and while we live on this new earth, the, the best picture that we have of what we will do is really seen best by what was done in the Garden of Eden as Adam and Eve were given dominion over the animals. It's best seen in the resurrected body of Jesus who had dominion over the natural forces of the earth. He could turn water into wine. He could walk on the water. It's not that we become gods. We become real human beings fulfilling God's eternal purpose to have dominion over creation and all of the entire universe. All of it, from the galaxies to the atoms. Wow. And, and here's the big surprise, is that you don't have to wait to die. This new is breaking into the old already. It began with the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. As he makes all things new in his own body, now he has given his spirit and the church is born and this new is beginning right here in my heart so that I now want to do the very things that God wants done. And that to love him as the center of my soul and to love other people as he would love them through me and, and to do everything in such a way that his will is accomplished, his good and gracious will, so that things done in my body are good and right and true and respectable. The new is breaking in. The reason that I'm sharing this with you, the reason that God tells us all of this is that this earth isn't just a way station. We're just waiting for the real show to begin when we die and we go to heaven. New creation is now. Your life makes a difference here and now because of Jesus who lives in you and with you and all of the good that he's going to do through you makes a difference. See, in all of this, we've been made for all of this. For the, we've been fashioned for all this as the very purpose of God. And you can, you can know that it's going to happen without a doubt. Because God has given us His Spirit as a deposit, as guaranteeing what is to come. We have quite a message to share with the world. And that's the reason we're in Tanzania and India and Brazil and in West Wichita at Open Arms and in all the campuses that God has in mind, in all the churches, the new has come. Amen. Together then.